Hey everybody, Christopher Rod here. Welcome to Mecha Bellum. This is a strategic auto battler. <laughs> it's really cool and it's really deep. There's a lot of different units and interactions and upgrades that you need to be paying attention to. Now, it's got a pretty heavy PvP focus. Now, as they're ramping up their servers for launch, uh, only the offline stuff is available. But I'm actually fine with that because this happens to be my favorite mode, survival mode. Thanks to Paradox Arc for sponsoring this video. I'm gonna have links down below for you to check this out on your own. And I highly suggest you do if you're into this style of game. Um, okay, so we're gonna go into survival mode. I'm gonna put it on easy. I've tried it on normal and got decimated. Tried on easy, got decimated. There's a lot of just learning, like I'm saying. So let's go in here and see what we can do. So in survival mode, we need to get through a certain number of waves. And I believe on easy, it's 12 waves. Uh, you also have durability stats in survival mode. These are these little pips above your units. When a squad gets wiped out, you lose one of those points of durability. If a unit loses all their durability, then they're gone and you get 75% of their cost refunded to you. Uh, promoting a unit to the next level restores all durability. So if you promoted this guy to his next level, he gets all that durability back. And the way you get promotions is by getting XP and killing things. Now, the units you start with and the units you're up against are seemingly random. Every time I've started this, it's been different. So what do these guys have? They have crawlers. They have steel balls. They have crawlers here. Mustangs, high-speed all-purpose unit, high-speed anti-unit bots and the steel balls, and then crawlers there. Um, I'm noticing that they are very light on being able to attack air units. So out of all of their units, only these guys can attack air. So that's interesting. I don't have any air units currently, but I've got 300 supplies to start with, and I could buy some Phoenix units, which might be advisable here to get an early lead. Now, um, what happens when we start a round? Well, everyone's gonna start attacking each other and they're gonna primarily try to get to these um, things. These are the enemies, these are ours. So our research center here, if it's destroyed, results in temporary paralysis for all allied units. And over here, same thing, decreases movement speed and attack and take additional damage. Increases movement speed and attack to take additional damage. So you really want to protect these and try to get the enemies down. Now, for our units starting, we have uh, two sets of storm callers that attack ground only. And then we have some arc light that attacks ground only. So we have no anti-air. They don't have any air, so that's good. But that means we're going to need to consider that in future rounds. Uh, each round, I'm allowed to place two units. I'm not probably going to be able to afford all of that right now, but... We're gonna place a uh, Phoenix here. You just do that by clicking. And then I'll spend this extra 100 on an attack enhancement. These are one-time buy blueprints from the research center that uh, just boost everything. So that's 10% attack there. Uh, we'll probably go into defense enhancement next. There's beacons so you can designate uh, movement paths for units, which is important because uh, once your unit is placed, you cannot reposition them and react to how the enemies change their placements. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is place this Phoenix unit way over here, basically as, as close to the enemy side as I can. Um, because these units can't attack the air, that's a pretty good starting position. Now, uh, I do wanna have some standard crowd control stuff here. So maybe what we'll do is start these guys just a little further back and we'll set maybe two of these guys Mm. Let's maybe do something like this. And then these uh, storm callers, heavy rocket launchers here. If you look at their uh, range, it's 180 meters. That's no joke. Uh, we're just going to plop these guys kind of in the middle. And then over here, this is going to, this is like our weak side right now. Uh, we will look at doing something like this. And we'll see how this goes. I don't know how this will go. As I've been saying, there's a lot to kind of learn about the interactions between all the units, but let's let it go. There's a bunch of camera angles up here. Automatic cameras by far the best. Let's keep an eye on our Phoenix units here. Now, one thing we haven't talked about yet, every unit has its own set of upgradable abilities as well. 
this arc light's just getting absolutely hammered on. But good news is, we're doing we're doing okay. But these guys are also going to get to our back line. So watch when we destroy this. So that puts like this really heavy slow on these units, but they're going to get the same thing on us. And now this is basically just our just our one buildings are standing like and that's fine we knew this was our weak side they're recovering a little faster because they got taken out first now these dudes these storm callers you see one thing that we can immediately tell is that they're not great at hitting moving targets once something is stopped however pretty good but that was basically basically a stalemate We might actually finish off all their units here. But watch, these guys are just kind of useless when units are moving. So you kind of want to position them where you're going to get into a, a standoff. We'll take that. Absolutely. So we're not taking any health damage here. This is our health damage in the top left. Um, they show as one because you're just surviving waves, right? Now, every round you get a, a reinforcement that you can pick. Both sides have the same reinforcement options, so you can kind of decide or, or start to think, like, my enemy's probably going to pick this, so maybe I want to go with something else. Some of them have costs, and uh, you can see that here. Let's take a look. Arc lights recruitment price is reduced by 50 subsidized arc light, so that means we'd probably want to go focus on that specific unit a lot. Fang's attack is increased by 40%. Movement's increased by 3, but range is decreased by 15. So that would be okay if you're trying to, like, swarm a lot. Heavy Hacker. The Hacker's HP is increased by 500%. But the movement speed is increased... Uh, and movement speed is increased by 5, but the range is reduced. Hacking units can, like, turn enemy units to your side. And then Electromagnetic Impact is something we can cast uh, that launches an Electromagnetic Impact shot and deals 35,000 damage to shields, temporary disables, tech on hit, and decreases movement speed. I'm going to look at the arc light here. So this is a standard crowd control bot. Um, I don't think we... Oh yeah, okay, cool. We have this arc light here. Uh, this guy got an upgrade, so that's really nice. And now upgrades, yes, you can wait for durability stuff, but you'll see here what it's changing, and it's doubling the health and doubling the attack. So like very, very strong. Let's, um, before we commit here, let's see what the enemies have. So they have a bunch of crawlers, uh, storm callers. They have no, they have no anti-air. They have none. That's pretty rare, but I'll take that. We could, <laughs> okay. So I didn't get the option to buy any more of uh, these units. But I do have an Overlord. It's a giant aircraft. Excels at dealing massive splash damage at medium and long range. Um, you can upgrade it with Mothership, which produces four wasps to join the battle every 26 seconds, which is pretty cool, but that's a little ways off. But I do have 500, and I feel like we upgrade this unit, the Phoenix, and then I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and buy... Do I? Yeah, I'll buy it. It's so cool. And I'm going to position it on our weak side. So let's do like so. I want these guys going ahead. This guy's going to come in behind. He's going to do splash damage. And then when we can, we'll start to uh, unlock Mothership here. And uh, when you unlock it for one group of units, it unlocks it for all the same units. So if we get multiple... Um, overlords that would be cool now the the stuff that shows up down here is random you don't can't always plan for what you're getting um and ideally you're you're taking advantage of the amount of units that you can place every turn but to get a big unit like this early i think is kind of cool so we can do that uh and then it shows you all of the upgrades that you picked over here so let's uh see how this goes we can't reposition these units, like I said, only the new ones. Uh, some of these guys, like here on the Phoenix, have jump drive that you can buy for 50. And then you're allowed to reposition them all the time, which is really nice. And so I think if I see Phoenix units in here, I'll continue to buy some, because that's pretty good for us. But um, yeah, let's go. We'll keep an eye on our Overlord here, who shouldn't have too many problems. This guy almost got wiped out immediately, but at least he's going to get something done here. 
Yeah, this he's going to absolutely own here. He's going to rack up a lot of XP. You can see the XP uh, by hovering on this badge. This guy's going to fall, but then there's literally nothing that can touch him, so... I would be shocked if they didn't bring any anti-air into this next round. Beautiful. Beautiful. This is literally the best performance I've had in any practicing that I've done. Um, but that said, they're not bringing any air units or any anti-air yet. Okay. Intensive training. Instantly increase the EXP of the designated squad to the maximum value. One round cooldown. So that means every two rounds, essentially, I can force somebody to level up. That seems pretty good. The recruitment price of Rhino is reduced by 100. I think these guys have a big blade on the front to go through a bunch of, like, smaller enemy units. Um, so it's in, in, reduced by 100, but attack is reduced by 30 and HP is reduced by 30. Okay. So I could recruit a lot of them, but, like, I can only get two per round right now. Smoke Bomb. I think I'm going to take Intensive Training for 50. Instantly increases the XP of the designated squad to maximum value. So, like, watch this. If I went here and said Intensive Training... ...on this guy... Yeah, boom. So now I can upgrade him, doubling HP, doubling damage. That puts us in a really good spot. So I'm doing that for sure. And we'll have to keep our eyes on that to see how often we can do it. I know it's every round, I just don't know if that means it's next round or the one after, but... That's very good. Okay. They now have Phoenixes and they have Mustangs. So they have some anti-air now. On both sides. Which is going to be very interesting. So I think what we need to do is we need to unlock... Um, yeah. We need to unlock this ability, the jump drive, so I can reposition these guys. Because I definitely don't want them going in first. Right? Um... I'm almost wondering if it's better for me to stack them on this left side now. We go and we just hammer this group. And then we kind of start repositioning our guys as our group over here starts to fail. Um, and then we swing these guys around. That's kind of what I'm thinking in my head. Will that work? I don't know. I can still place two units. Um, we did make the arc lights cheaper. But is this what I want? Ground only crawlers, high speed melee units that fight in a group, right? So that's these little guys. Um, these guys are good for the crowd control, but then these guys are kind of going to be anti arc light, which is unfortunate. It, hopefully, he gets enough XP here where I can level him next round and have that durability back up. It should happen. Um, I need some anti air over here, I think. Like maybe fangs. Or wasps, even. I could do one of each. because So I at least am putting more units out there. And then they're both air and ground. So, yeah. Let's do some fangs. And we'll put these guys... Up here. Enemy units can come in behind as well. Something to keep in mind. And then we'll go into some wasps, which is kind of expensive. Um, but I think that's okay. And then we have to unlock jump drive on the wasps. Remember, these guys are phoenix. It's a different unit type. So, uh, even though this is only cost 50, I'm fine with that. Um, also, it looks like the wasps were level 2. I only just caught that now. That's why they're a little bit more expensive. And sometimes you can get that. So, that's cool. If we look over here, uh, let me place these guys once and for all. If we look at this, the command center, there's a couple things in here that you can do once in a while. So mass recruitment, increase the number of units that you can be purchased uh, in this round by one. So you have to do this each time you want to use it. Uh, elite recruitment, so level two units can be purchased in this round, valid for one round only. Um, so if they don't spawn naturally like this wasp did, then you can do that. Enhanced range. Uh, increases the range of all range units by 15 for this round. And high mobility increases the movement speed of all units by 3 for this round. You also have this free rapid supply. So you immediately get 200 supplies and then get 300 fewer in the next round. So if you really want the money, uh, you can do that. But you, you take a hit in the future. Uh, so yeah, I think we're in a pretty good spot. We don't have any additional levels. 
Let's uh, see how this goes. Keep an eye on our wasps here. Yeah, so our little dudes, our little fangs just got decimated. But while they're doing that, they're kind of holding units at bay for our storm callers to lock into. Overlord is starting to get hammered on. Okay, this is working. This is working. Ba boom. Yeah, we're owning right now. Okay, this is sick. This is sick. We I will say we got a pretty fortuitous start. Fang's attack speed again. Heavy armor. HP of units equipped with this item is increased by 100%. The attack of units equipped with this item is increased by 100%. Improved firepower control system. Let's throw that. And uh, what else do we have here? So I got level 2 phoenixes again. Some marksmen here, which is pretty nice for some sniping. So what do they have? They have a bunch of marksmen. They've got three. Now they've got a Vulcan on the map. Giant crowd control bot. So he's ground only. This melting point could be a problem. He's got his attack range buffed here. And he attacks air and ground. Air and ground on these Mustangs. So they're, they're really seeing like, okay, we've got some, some stacking happening over here. I'm going to lose this arc light, And I'll get 75% of his resources back. Um, this guy is available to upgrade. So we'll do this. It's too bad. Uh, let's go here. Let's grab our HP buff of all units. I could just grab a tactical nuke for 400, but I don't think we're going to do that. I think we need to go into some of these here. Uh, if I'm getting these phoenixes at level 2, I don't see why I wouldn't take them. So I'll buy another set of the phoenix. Um, this side's going to be very interesting to me. Very interesting. Because this guy is a problem. He's got 38,000 health. And he targets air and ground. Um, we're strong too. Don't get me wrong. So maybe I go um, wasps here. With the mothership upgrade. Actually, hold on. Let me buy one more unit. Let's do. Uh, let's bring in some marksmen. Eventually, I'm going to want some of these. Um, I'll put the marksmen over here, actually. To help with that side. And then here I'm going to do Mothership. So every 26 seconds, four wasps are going to spawn from the Overlord. And let's just see how this goes. Do I want to move these guys? Uh... Hmm. I think this side is our... We're, we're strong here and we're weak here, right? And even though these guys are air units. This, this guy I think is single target. Yeah, he's an anti-unit bot. Um, and he basically, like, I think throws, like, a laser and then starts to literally melt you. Uh, another camera thing, by the way, is you can go into this, like, player perspective, which is kind of cool. Um, I still just prefer the, the auto camera as much as possible, but, um, and then here we have to put this control system on. I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm gonna put it on our big boy here. 15,000. Just watch this. Just watch the Overlord. I don't want to zoom in that much. So he spawned those four little wasp units. Oh yeah, the flame is cool. Oh my god. Demolished. Okay, now let's see here. This is going to be interesting. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Okay. That Overlord could carry us to victory here if we play our cards right. So, we still haven't taken any damage. That's insane. Uh, we could unlock this ability. Units equipped with this item can move freely during the deployment phase every round. I'm going to put this deployment module on uh, our Overlord. Oh, maybe I can. Can I only do one upgrade? Yeah, okay. I can maybe only do one upgrade per unit. Yeah, so he's got this. Um, 
let's see here. Is there anybody I need to save durability-wise? We lost that one unit, so we got some extra supplies here. These guys can be upgraded. Let's do that. You can be upgraded. Now, they're putting rhinos, like, right in our face with upgrades. Restores 4.5 of max HP per second upon taking damage. Rhinos activate a self-destruct mechanism at zero, dealing damage equivalent to Rhinos' max HP to all units within 48 meters. That's sketch. So this dude's probably going to die from that. Um, yeah, and we have units spawning in behind now, as you can see. So let's do extensive training here and get another upgrade for this just to become, like, unkillable. You know, uh, deployment modules we don't need on the air units because we can unlock uh, jump drive. So let's do that. And these guys are ground only, ground only. So this is actually fine because we're just going to reposition back here. And we're going to reposition you back here. Um, this guy would decimate these and he's probably going to destroy these guys too. Um, what do I need for this side? This is my sniper. Uh, I do need to get units down for sure. What if I had a storm caller? Very fragile unit excels at super long range splash damage in a large area. It is able to, unable to attack units that are in close range. It's an option. Or, <laughs> I, maybe I just go giant... Giant stuff. Giant aircraft. Giant guard robot. Strikes enemies with high damage artillery. It's all of our money. But it is cool as hell. It's level 2. Yeah, you know what? Let's just, let's just throw some robots in here. Some big ass robots. What could go wrong? What could go wrong? He asked. The downside here is it takes a long time to kill these little units with these single shots. And these guys might just get to our command center and destroy it. This will be interesting. I don't know that we defend this. Yeah, that's going to fall. Oh, they might get through here too. Oh, wow. Okay. I think we can still win the unit battle though. I think we can still win the unit battle. Because we've cleared everything now, and it's just a matter of time. Yeah, sick. Okay. So, minor setbacks there, but... Okay. Overall. What do we have next? Now, we haven't used any, like, active abilities yet. Upgrading units equipped with this item no longer consume supplies. It's not bad. Repairs damage continuously with nanobots. You need to equip with this item, recover 4.5% of max HP per second. Okay. Let's take that. Let's put the nano repair kit on this guy, because he's got a lot of max HP. So that seems insane. Arc light level three. Now remember, um, we made these guys cheaper. So this is pretty good value actually. Or do I set up two fortresses? So they've got a level 3 Vulcan crowd control bot here. Level 1 Vulcan, level 2 Fortress, level 1 Melting Point. And you can see they've, they've got some upgrades and stuff in there as well. I could unlock this so that he could be redeployed anywhere. Increase range by 40. God, is that expensive, but probably awesome. I wouldn't mind a Vulcan, but, like, he doesn't have a lot of crowd control stuff. And he does have, um, what the hell are these? I don't know what that is. I think that might be, like, smoke deployers or something. I think. I'm not sure. Okay, well. I could go with another over... Huh, maybe I go another overlord. I've done it. Because we already have some upgrades there, so I feel like that's not too shabby. 
And then, uh, yeah, it's every second turn we can use that. Let's maybe put our deployment module on this guy. Oh, he already has something. That's right. Okay. I'm, I'm eventually going to unlock the thing for... Um, I'm eventually going to unlock jump drive, I think. So let's try and place one more unit. Let's maybe go arc lights. I'm just a little concerned that I'm not going to be able to deal with, like, these two big units here, but we'll see. Okay, so I can't place any more units. Let's look at upgrading some. These guys can move. So what I'm going to do here is um, move them back to this position so that hopefully we can clear this and then maybe go over to this side, but who knows. Um... Their upgrades are pretty expensive. Increase range on the Stormcaller, maybe? Oh, let's upgrade these guys. These fangs, I don't know if they're going to end up doing anything. It ch attacks have a chance to ignite the target unit. 6% HP per second. Just feel like these guys are gonna die so fast, you know. Increase range. Um, let's try this electromagnetic interference. Uh, temporarily saving the target's tech and decreasing its movement speed by forty. Okay, we've got a few of those, so it doesn't feel too bad. And then I've got this, where I can absorb um, using a shield. I have to place it on the enemy side. Hmm. Disappears permanently. What if I do this? Do I have to place these when we're live? Maybe that's the case. Okay. No. I I, I have to place them before. Oh, that... Okay. So that's like... I think that's the sentry missiles. This guy's gone. Okay, though, I got two big overlords. What's going to happen here? This Vulcan's doing way too much work right now. Oh, we're going to take this out, though. Oh, damn. Nice. Okay, so they're paralyzed. This is the tech being offline, so any other upgrades. Oh, we're absolutely owning. Okay. Uh, increases the number of deployable units per round to three. Yes, we're going to take that. And now we're going to start focusing on units because we have the ability to do so. Uh, our phoenixes are upgraded. I could take um, two more phoenix. Here's the, the shields that I was just trying to do for ourselves. And let's take another phoenix. And then we have Mustangs, right? Oh, wait, do we? I thought we did, but I guess we have uh, Fangs. We do have Wasps. Phoenix. I'm pretty sure I have Wasps. Oh, yeah, I've got Wasps way back here. Okay, so I'm not going to upgrade them yet because I won't have the money. And I want to make sure I'm putting out as many units as I can. I think we might just be in a really good spot here. Uh, let's move these guys over here. And these guys can stay. I'm going to put these guys really far back, actually. Okay. Let's roll. We're a little heavy on the air units, but... It 
See, they're actually... They're getting enough to kill my overlord. Which is definitely a concern. That left side went down way faster than I expected. So, the level of their units, the positioning of their units, making a big difference here. I'm like, yeah, we're going to disable another one of their towers, but... The Stormcaller's level 6? Wow, okay, so that's... That's significant. Like, that, we don't have anything even close to that. Let's go, Phoenix. Nice, nice. That's huge. That's the winner right there. Wow, they took down both of our big guys. This is actually pretty close. That was sneaky. That was, that was big damage sneak right there. Did not see that coming. Okay. Okay, round seven is done. Attack of units with this item is increased by 75, and HP is increased by 75%. <laughs> I'm going to put this on... <laughs> I'm going to put this on our overlord here. Attack 6615. His is crazy. And this guy's only level 1. Um, we have our leveling thing here again. Okay, what do they have? Look at their levels now. So they have some level 7 fangs in the front there. They have these hacker bots, which I hope we take care of. This group is scary. Okay. So I need giant crowd control bots. And I need him here. And what I'm going to do is go extensive training on this new unit. Upgrade him immediately. And then we'll back him up with what? Light melee. Maybe I just go more Phoenix. And then you could take... At the beginning of combat, summon one marksman at the same level as Vulcan to fight with you. Yeah, sure. Why not? That's cool. Oh, I have a sneaky Vulcan in the back here that I didn't upgrade. Is anybody... Oh, I'm going to lose these guys. That's fine. We've been losing them for a while. This arc light I can't do anything about. It doesn't have any experience. Um, I could do this. So he's got the redeployment now. And then I could just bring him back here to buy a little bit of time. Uh, you can go here. This guy's ground only. This would have been good to upgrade. These guys too, but... I think these guys probably survive they're going to come in much later. And uh, I can't do anything about this. These things are just going to hit. You know what? Actually, let's do this. Let's go into the rapid resupply. We're going to get 200 supplies right now. Okay. Then we'll upgrade here. And we'll upgrade here. I think that's okay. I think that's fine. We only have one unit behind. So let me maybe move this unit to here because I want them going forward. And you too. Yeah, I don't really want you doing that, but. All right. Let's see how this goes. I would prefer this unit is attacking here, but. Let's see what happens. Let's see if we can put our own sentries down here. So, I guess if they come to here, then same situation. Oh my god, that 
just wipes that group, eh? If this guy gets any shots off, yeah, yeah, I'm happy with that. He just nerfed that whole group. Okay, it's getting interesting. I wonder if one of our dudes got hacked, because it looked like he turned around to attack one of our units. So far, so good, man. Our momentum is, like, really high right now. Increase the attack of all units by 30%. The HP of units equipped with this item is increased by 200%. Damn. This is pricey, but, I mean, how do I not take this? Right? I have to. It's just that, you know, obviously it's, it's costly. Um, okay, so you need to be upgraded. You guys are still surviving. Light melee ground units coming in there. You guys need an upgrade. Uh, you guys cannot upgrade. You can. So you're going to look at the increase there. Each attack fires two shells in succession, but reload time is increased by 12%. That's fine. That's all we can do. This guy still has durability, so I don't need to upgrade there. We can do that next round. I'm feeling a little bit maybe overconfident here. I should have re... Oh, we don't have the reposition on our Vulcan. So my middle is weak now. Just based on our unit positioning, but... That disabling of tech seems very strong. Beautiful. They did take down our command center. Nice. Okay, let's see if we can finish this out in a couple of rounds here. I'd be, I'd be stoked. This is the furthest I've ever been. So it's, I'm great. I'm super happy that we're catching this. <laughs> uh, ground giant units only. Generate a barrier with 60,000 HP to protect nearby units. Hell yeah. Giant ground units. So do I have to... Oh, I see. See, the, the, these guys already have a thing. So this guy could do it, I guess. Look at the sledgehammer. Woo-wee! Ground only. Tank. Level four. Get another overlord. Tempting, trust me. I think we gotta take a level four tank. These guys right in front of this dude are absolutely going to crush. Uh, let's throw this here. And then we can put these units inside. So we have an early little defense here. Upgrade this one. Upgrade this one. Upgrade this one. Who's got the lowest durability? Upgrade this one. This guy still is alive somehow, but... Okay, that's all we got. Who do I want to give extensive training to? Hold on. Hold up. It's not like I can use it, but I want to put it on cooldown. Oh, we missed our mothership upgrade here. This guy's really close. That guy's fine. Who just needs a huge XP boost? Fortress, I guess. I just, like I said, I can't afford to do that. Um, I could do this, actually. Let me let me take this again. And we're going to upgrade him to level 4. And then we're good. I didn't even consider enemy unit placement here. I'm just, I'm feeling strong. What are 
these guys. Okay, so they... These are level 2 arc lights with everything unlocked. And I do feel like something like this could be our downfall. Where they've got... They, they spent a lot of money on barriers, for one thing. Um, but they're also spending a lot of money on these upgrades, which impact every squad of that type. So this could be the start of their comeback here, because I don't think we're clearing all these units. We'll see. We do have the, uh, the wasps coming out every 26 seconds, but these barriers are causing problems. Maybe we have enough. I don't know. But these are level 6 arc lights here, too. Like, they're just not getting damage into our fortress, right? He's got 240,000 health. Like, what are they supposed to do? This is what they need. They need to kite us, which they might do. Come on, buddy. Keep tanking. Oh, my God. They're definitely going to get us. Because he can't take them out these Phoenix, unfortunately. At round 10, they finally have done it. His regen. Oh, my God. Okay. So now they sh take damage here towards us. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. What do we got here? Aerial units no longer consume supplies and being unlocked. And their range is increased by 10. Decreases the recruitment cost of non-giant units by 50. Movement speed of all units by 100. Melting point we don't even have. Hmm. Let's give them uh, that range boost. Now... I want to be getting our upgrades in here. It's costly, though. This Vulcan, I think, is going to actually die here. Unfortunately. I'm going to try this. I'm just surrounding the Vulcan. Need the upgrade there for the durability. Marksman, sure. I'm just going to overload that middle section. Mm. So it has to be fully placed on our side. That's the deal with the uh, with that bubble. Okay. Oh, man, our big guy in the middle there just gets absolutely slam jammed. We're looking good on this right side, though. There's just so many shields, and they've got a buttload of air units, too, now. Oh, I don't know, man. We might not be able to beat this. We were looking OP for a bit, but... What is that? Our fortress, man. Keep going, buddy. This tech is disabled, but look at that regen. Look at that regen. Oh, he's... They're doing it. They're doing it for sure. These, uh, Phoenix, they just can't put out the damage. It's necessary. He can't hit the skies, so he needs to go for the building, I guess. Beautiful. Now, as far as I can tell, I can't control this speed. It just happens, like, as the round thing starts to tick down. Okay. Round 12. I think this is it. Hmm. 
I'm gonna skip this and I'm just gonna take the extra supplies. So I did lose my big unit there, which is not great. That was a uh, Vulcan, right? So now they've got Vulcans, level one melting points, level one Vulcan, level two melting point, level one, one, three, two. They have some Phoenix in the back. I mean, I feel like we should be strong enough here. Let's increase the range on the Overlords. Upgrade you. Upgrade you. Um, I would. It would be cool if you had like a um. Ooh. I'm gonna take this guy to level four. Be cool if you could have like a summary to show you how many units of a certain type you have. Cockpit of destroyed Phoenix will follow behind the nearest allied Phoenix will be fully restored in 20 seconds. This effect can only be triggered two times for battle. Quantum reassembly. I think that might have been what we saw here, that little circle thing happening. So I think that sounds pretty cool. And then I'll throw down uh, a sentry thing here if they come near. And uh, guys, let's hope for the best. Oh my, and the fortress. Look at this guy. That beamer, though, just wrecking him. Oh, this is not looking that good. Oh, this is not good. We're definitely losing this round. These um, melting points, I think, are going to absolutely screw me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're gone, so. Whoa! Oh! In the final round. Is that enough to kill me? <gasps> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Wow. 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 So, is that it? That's a. So, so, that's a draw? Is that what that is? Save replay? Oh, cool. Why is that a draw? I feel like we survived the rounds. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know, but that's... I love this. This is really, really, really fun. Um, yeah, it's... it. There's a, there's just a big learning curve. I think that's the, the biggest thing I would say is... Uh, if you like this kind of game and you're willing to learn the strategy about, like, what are the best units to counteract your enemy, then cool. And PvP changes everything, right? Because every round you're competing against human players. So if you're into that, um, that's like the main focus of the game. But I really like this survival mode because I like wave defense type stuff. So it's a good bit, a good mix. Uh, thanks again to Paradox Arc for sponsoring. It's very cool. Check out the links down below, guys. Hope you enjoyed. And uh, we'll see you next time.